All right. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I have another special guest today, uh, somebody who's been a tremendous help to me behind the scenes uh, with our Warrington campus uh, and has really become a friend. Uh, and that's uh, Devin. Uh, and uh, Devin Dorish, is that how you pronounce? I always I always mix up your last name. How do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> It's Dorsch, one one syllable. Uh, I said it right. I said yeah. it right. Good. <laughs> so, Devin, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and uh, and uh, what you do outside of church. Yeah. So, um, you know, my uh, my wife and I have been attending Element since uh, I think it was about 2000, 2010. Um, and you know, I'm I'm originally like uh, I grew up in you know Kirksville um, area. All, you know, also Columbia. My my dad worked in Columbia. My mom taught up at Truman, so we were back and forth quite a bit. But um, you know, knew that after college I was going to uh, you know want to get out of that small town environment. Um, you know, as far as like job prospects at the time, there wasn't you know a lot there. So you know, moved to St. Louis um, area and have been here since. Um, you know, and then my, my wife and I, we own an e-commerce company, um, Grillaholics, and we sell barbecue accessories online. And, um, you know, as far as being involved at the church, um, you know, it, it really was home for us when we, when we first came, like we, um, you know, she grew up Catholic and, you know, I grew up in like a non-denominational church, um, but, you know, didn't attend regularly, you know, when I was younger, I, um, you know, it was kind of one of those things where like church was boring and so I didn't like going. And so, um, you know, we both kind of had been away from church a little bit and then, you know, we're like, we need to get back into church and started looking at a few different places, um, attended Element, really liked it and then just kept coming ever since. And now it's like we get excited for, you know, Sunday mornings to get up and, and go to church. That's awesome, man. And that's so cool that you guys have been with Element, gosh, for 10 years now. And um, you guys, uh, we, and if I'm not mistaken, you guys got uh, you guys got married after you started going to Element, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There was so there was an Element pastor that had married you. And so that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, man, that's awesome. And I know one of the things that uh, you've helped me with specifically is engagement like how do we engage people especially in the digital world uh, as a digital retailer and so uh, I, I really appreciate that from you you know tell us a little bit about your experience of like really having to figure out how to engage people in a digital age because you've been doing this long before the whole COVID stuff being an on online retailer what are some things you've learned along the way well I think I mean you know for me it's like Yes, we we sell products, but you know the bulk of what we do really comes down to marketing and and doing that online, you know, and just getting in front of the eyeballs where they are, um, you know. And so for me, that's been like you know something that became kind of natural. Um, you know, my background was finance and accounting, but that was always pretty boring to me. Um, and so once I kind of got into the marketing stuff, you know, I realized how cool it was and exciting, um, you know. And so I've I've kind of felt like. Um, that's a, a good area for me to, you know, also kind of give back to the church, you know, and help with, um, you know, some of the outreach and marketing, uh, aspects of, of bringing more people to element. Um, but, you know, I would say the biggest thing is just kind of being everywhere that you can, right? So, you know, making sure that, um, you're utilizing the channels and meeting people where they're at and, um, connecting with them there. That's so good to hear, man. And I think a lot of, uh, especially business owners and marketplace leaders right now need to hear that because this is a different world. Like two months ago, everything was different. Now we find ourselves in a complete digital age um, and this isn't going away. This, right. this isn't like, I mean, things aren't going to hundred percent return back to normal again tomorrow or anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so given that uh, even as an online retailer and somebody who doesn't have a brick and mortar store, uh, you know, some of the CDC guidelines and, and just the whole virus worldwide, uh, you know, uh, shutdown has affected you in some ways. Um, tell us a little bit about those things and, and how you've had to navigate that. Yeah. Um, so I would it's interesting because, you know, some of the stuff has affected us, but some of it 
um, you know, has helped, right? So I would say that from, you know, like a sales standpoint, things have been pretty good because more people are shopping online, right? So, you know, we saw an initial, you know, drop uh, early in March when things kind of first started happening because, you know, I think at the time people weren't really that, you know, weren't thinking about grilling, they were thinking about other stuff, right? Um, but then, you know, once we got to April and, you know, people had been at home and they're cooking for themselves more and stuff like that, you know, we actually saw our sales increase um, because, you know, generally people weren't going to, you know, their retailers uh, to buy stuff they were, you know, ordering online. And so, while that part has been really awesome, um, you know, that has also created challenges for, for us in terms of, um, you know, inventory and logistics. You know, we we currently source uh, all of our products in China, and um, you know that has its challenges too because you know there's a lot of misinformation about um, you know products from China and you know business. You know, people are always like, "Oh, I want to support American companies," and it's kind of like, "Well, we are an American company, and you know, yes, we do order our products overseas." Um, but that's still such a small piece, right? Like there's still more happening in the U S economy from us selling here and, you know, hiring people here and, um, you know, all those types of things, you know, not to mention, I think there's this, um, this misunderstanding that people have when like they say that they want to buy American products, but what they don't realize is that most of the stuff that they buy are not American products, right? It's like, you know, your TV, your cell phone, um, the clothes that you wear, you know, a lot of times, none of those things are actually made in the U S. Um, and then, you know, even when you look at like grilling products, you know, some of the, uh, the leading grilling companies, um, you know, they may make their grills in the U S or Canada. Um, some of them, some of them actually over, uh, send that overseas too, but pretty much none of them make their accessories in the U S. Um, so as a small business, sometimes we get held to this, this standard, um, that, they're not actually applying to anybody else because they make assumptions. Um, but anyway, all that said, you know, with the um, some of these challenges that we've had, it's created some, you know, um, some slowdown in terms of um, production in China. You know, we've had some issues with like logistics getting product here from China. So like air freight right now has gone crazy because everybody's trying to get things in, you know, whether it's, you know, face yeah. masks or hand sanitizer or, you know, any of these things, like not to mention just normal goods, you know, and people are trying to get it here now. So then air freight's kind of gone crazy. And then, you know, there's some delays when it comes to sea freight too. So it's uh, definitely an interesting challenge, but, um, you know, we're kind of doing what we can where we can. Right on, man. Wow. And, and we were talking a little before this about just the logistics that are behind, you know, uh, getting product from one place to another, even after it gets here to the States. And uh, it's it's mind boggling what goes into it. And uh, even as an online retailer, how much you really have to pay attention to logistics um, in order to, you know, uh, fulfill the demand, you know? Yeah. And so I think that's great. Um, I imagine as a business owner, um, there have been times where it's been very stressful. There's been times where it's been great. Um, you know, it, I've, I'm a former business owner myself. It's peaks and valleys, you know. Mm -hmm. um, this has probably been a very stressful time for some business owners, whether they're online or not. Uh, what advice can you give to people that maybe are feeling stressed or burdened right now in their businesses? Uh, and what encouragement can you give them? Yeah. Um, let's see here. I, I think there's like a number of things, you know, obviously, um, and I think, uh, Pastor Eric's message in the last couple of weeks has really been spot on for it, but, you know, some of it is just giving that stress to God, right. And letting mm -hmm. it be his, you know, that they're not your problems, they're his problems. Um, you know, and that, you know, anything's possible with Jesus. So I think that's the first thing is remembering that. Um, and then secondly, it's, you know, I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, you definitely got to put a lot of effort into self-care and, and taking care of yourself so that, you know, you can perform, you know, at the level that you need to, right? So, um, you know, taking time to exercise, eating right, um, you know, meditating, you know, spending time in the word, you know, those are all things that I think if, if you make sure you prioritize those, then some of the other stuff kind of comes together. And then, you know, outside of that, like, 
really when it comes to business, you got to just focus on the things that you can control, right? So, you know, if something has changed that you can't, you know, focus on, or sorry, not focus on, if something's changed that you can't control, then really you got to look at, well, what areas can I control, right? Can I do more, um, you know, blog posts or social media posts to get awareness for my business? Um, you know, maybe if you're, you're in a position where your business is shut down, um, you know, is this the time where I can, you know, focus on my marketing strategy or my website or, um, you know, just creating value in other ways so that when I'm able to reopen my business, um, you know, I'm prepared for that and, you know, people will, I'm still in the, like the, the front of mind for people. Um, you know, so those are kind of some of the things that I, I would recommend. That's so good, man. And that absolutely really lines up with uh, what we hear Pastor Eric teach, you know, you put God first and then we really focus on our relationship with God and then we can really help others, you know, and I, and I love your heart too, man. I know one of the things you're really passionate about and what drives you as a business owner is not just, you know, how much money I can make, but it's really about like how you can come along and help advance the kingdom of God. Uh, and I love that, man. Any other thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think the biggest thing, you know, like I, I do find that, you know, with my my marketing experience, that that's one of the ways that I like to, you know, kind of serve at the church is, you know, um, you know, working with you and and kind of just communicating some ways that we can, um, you know, improve our marketing. But aside from that, you know, I really feel like God is saying, you know, asking me to focus on my business and growing it, you know, as profitable and as big as I can. Um, you know, so that I can get more to, uh, you know, back to the church to do things, right? Like, um, you know, I, I think, I'm trying to remember the the analogy, but basically it's like, think of entrepreneurs as like the kings, right? And, you know, that they they really fund the, the growth of the kingdom of God. Man, that's so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that and sharing your heart, man. Uh, if people want to find out more about what you offer in your business and the, the, the grilling accessories that, uh, that you offer, where, where can they find you? Yeah. So our website is grillaholics.com. Um, and then we're also available on like walmart.com and amazon.com. So, um, in any of those places, just look for grillaholics and, uh, you can check us out. Man, that's awesome. And we'll put that into the comments. Okay. Uh, when we, we show this later that'd be great awesome. man well hey Thank you. are you ready for the bonus round i got a couple of yeah. quick, uh quick fire answers all right quick q a here all right here we go uh coffee or tea i would say both um but you know i like going to starbucks for coffee but then um i like tea at home so i don't know all right <laughs> just depends on what i'm getting best of both worlds right yeah. uh, early riser or night owl so I find that I perform better if I do the early rising, but my natural default is to stay up late. Uh, do you have a current favorite show? Oh, man, there's a lot. Um, I uh, I really enjoy all the Chicago series. And then, um, you know, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med. And then um, I'm really a big fan of SEAL Team and SWAT. Those are probably like, those three things are like my favorites right now. Right on, man. Uh, do you have a favorite book? Uh, yeah, so I read a lot of um, personal development, business books, marketing books. Um, and so one of my favorites is called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Um, and it's basically just like how to, um, you know, share your knowledge and build like a kind of like a personal brand around, you know, the things that you know. Awesome, man. And then uh, that sounds good. And then uh, if you could meet anybody past or present, who would it be and why? Yeah. So I think for me, I would say Donald Trump. Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons behind that. But I think the first one, like, I mean, I think as far as marketing and business, you know, the man's brilliant, um, has, you know, created a lot of different things where, um, I think you can learn from those successes, whether it's, you know, real estate or um, even just like his presidential campaign, um, I think has been like, there's a lot of learnings to take from that. And as a marketer, like I geek out on that stuff. Um, so that's probably what I would say there. Right on, man. Awesome. Yeah. And what I, one of the things I love about you, man, is that uh, you love to grow. 
you know, and uh, and I think that's awesome. And you're willing to to learn from so many different avenues. Uh, and I think there's a good lesson for a lot of people in that too, man. If we stop growing, we're we're dead. So yeah, definitely. Devin, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us, for all the help that you've been to our Warrington campus and to me personally. Uh, we really appreciate you, man. Thank you again. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. Right on, man.